before we, we really wrap up, you know, talking about the finals, I want to ask you, what do you think the Mavericks do from here? Do you think there's any real changes they need to make? Um, I, I've heard mixed opinions on, you know, what they would need to do moving forward. So I'm interested to hear your take on, on where they go from here. I just think they can't be complacent. Uh, I talked about this on Pick Aside yesterday. I think if you look at the last two teams who represent the Eastern Conference, Miami and Boston, when Miami lost last year, there really wasn't any changes to the roster. They brought in Terry Rozier. You make draft picks, of course, but there wasn't really an, any drastic change to the Miami Heat team. And I think you saw, of course, injuries on top of it. But even if Jimmy Butler was healthy, I don't think they go back and definitely not win the championship. Then you have Boston, who two years ago, Ran back the same team, added Malcolm Brogdon, but it was 99% the same team. They failed, and they're like, okay, we have to make drastic changes to this team to win a championship. And they got to the finals. They've been going to ECFs. The, the formula they had was working enough to win, but it wasn't enough to win a championship. And I think Dallas is in a similar situation where it's very easy to sit on your hands this offseason, re-sign Derrick Jones, maybe add a bench piece or potential uh, you know, minor upgrade as a starter, and say, we got to the final year. We have a top player in the world in Luke, the best Rob Kyrie. It's very easy to do that. But I think if they're serious about trying to win the championship, I think they have to make a, not drastic, but I think they need to get a considerable upgrade at the wing position, especially offensively. I think what Derek Jones Jr. did this season was amazing, especially considering what he did uh, on a rookie, not rookie, on a minimum deal, you know, signing late in the, in the off season and being such a huge contributing factor defensively he was great that okay c series he shot really well but i think that's a spot you can upgrade with and you can mm -hmm. make in my opinion the, the the most ideal move which i don't know if is available is a guy like mikhail bridges someone who's shown in the past that you could have him as your number three on a championship team he could lock in defensively and then he could also play with the ball or without the ball because yes. you have Kyrie and luca so someone that gives you an upgrade offensively while still not taking away a lot defensively listen Every team in the in the NBA wants a wing that can guard and can score. So yep. we could say this for every team in the NBA. But I think it's important for Dallas to look at this roster and say, we had a great run, but we just can't sit here and assume we're going to do the same thing again. Because what happens if we run into Denver? What happens if we run into an OKC team next year who just shoots normal and not terrible for a series? And they're going to be a year further along with potentially upgrades in this offseason. So you can't just look at the West and the NBA and say, we're just going to do the same thing again. I do think they need to make at least one pretty decently big move mm -hmm. to get better, uh, get a, be a, just have a better starting five. Agreed. I, I think something that was evident to me in this series um, – Additionally, I think they're missing another connecting piece, whether that's a wing um, or we even see – I was super impressed with Derek Live this entire postseason. He was great. Um, I thought his playmaking as a rookie in this whole run, but even in the finals, was well beyond what I thought it would be coming into his, his first year coming out of Duke. Um, so maybe he takes even more you know progression on that front, but I think they're, they need – Another person, and not to be a guy that can relieve additional ball pressure, I think between Kyrie and Luca, they have that pretty much settled. But you need guys who are comfortable with the ball in their hand to be a decision maker. And I think they have what they have currently, where it's like you have Derek Jones, you have PJ Washington, and you're bringing in a guy like Josh Green or, you know, Maxi Kleba off the bench. And it's like they are not decision makers. They're, if they're catching it, it's 99% of the time, it's just to shoot or they're here to, you know, on a cut, drive, whatever. Um, so it's like if they could find another decision maker to add even more fluidity and more make their offense a little bit more dynamic, not even necessarily to say that that ball needs to get out of Lucas hands as much, because I don't think he's as, you know, pound the ball, dribble, dribble, dribble. We've seen with a guy like Harden at times. Um, but I, I just think obviously having more, um, connectors on your offense to get everybody more involved, make it more easier, and even relieve some of the pressure off of Luca to have to always be the guy to find shots um, would definitely be a step in the right direction. And obviously, like you said, if they could find a way to get anybody remotely close to a Mikel Bridges archetype, that would be huge. Um, because to be fair, we saw what they were able to do with not saying that he is at the same level as Mikel Bridges, but a guy like Dorian Finney-Smith who could – not down threes at times, but defensively would get so locked in on that side of the ball. Um, and he was a huge part of them being able to make that deep run to the Western Conference Finals just a few years ago. 
Um, so it, it would definitely be a, a huge upgrade for the Mavericks and one that I think, like you said, would be needed because they can be complacent in the NBA as a whole. I actually had one of my coworkers ask me this recently. Um, he asked me about the state of, of parity and competition in the NBA. And I said, I really think it's probably in a place where it's better than it's ever been, partially because you have a mix of guys coming in who are younger than ever, more talented at a younger age than ever before. And you could really make a case out West that there are 13 legitimate, like, let's just say good teams. Obviously there's going to be different teams, tiers, yeah. right. But outside of Utah and Portland, you're going to get Wemby's year two, <laughs> like whatever that's going to look like potentially with, you know, two high lottery picks or any trades that San Antonio may make. You're going to get a Rockets team that was already almost a playing team this year. The Warriors are going to obviously have to look to retool, um, but you can't ever count a team with Steph Curry out. The, uh, the Grizzlies are going to be healthy next year. Like the West is going to be absurdly deep. So to your point, you can't afford to just want to run it back because everybody around you is young and getting better and going to be making moves to try to make that championship push. Because um, I think something that doesn't necessarily get talked about enough and I think teams are starting to realize is this isn't the same, you know, NBA where it's, we got uh, Warriors Cavs year after year after year. There is a ton of opportunity there to go up and have a year where you are able to go in and win a championship. And so you're going to have so many more teams that are going to look to be buyers instead of sellers and always look to make that all in move. Um, so you, yeah, you're like, to your point, you cannot, cannot be complacent if you're Dallas, but I don't think they need to make any major changes. I was definitely iffy on the the move to go and get a guy like Kyrie when it first happened. Me too. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I would say I I'm fully on board with that pairing now. Um, you know, after this season. And I think a lot of it obviously has had to do with them retooling the defensive pieces around them. And then obviously both of them buying in a little bit more on the defensive side of the ball. So have to tip your cap to, to Jason Kidd on that front. But, you know, hopefully Nico Harrison out there doesn't, you know, make too many drastic changes to this roster. And just, again, like you said, tries to retool, you know, with a wing um, to, to potentially boost them up and put them in a position where they could, again, continue to compete for finals here because you have a guy like Luca your championship window is open as long as he's on your roster playing like this. Yeah. I, I just think the probably one like out, not outlier, but like caveat is Kyrie Irving's just not going to be there forever. Like the Kyrie yeah. window is probably like two more seasons after this. And then you're approaching like 35, 36 year old Kyrie mm -hmm. and listen, he could still be great. Is he going to be the same level of player we've seen this year? Uh, I guess last year was kind of an off year because he got banged up, but just you probably only have a couple more seasons of Kyrie being at like a great level where he could be the number two next to Luca until like eventually he's going to start falling off um, and not having that same impact. Mm -hmm.